All right, brought to you by DigiKey. Uh, breaking news, it's uh, AMS Osram. I said AMS. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sure this has happened before, but yeah. now use my mistakes for you to learn. Learn from it's me. It's not a big deal. No, not I mean, it's deal. confusing. AMS Osram. AMS. Lydia, what is the new product introduction of the week this week from AMS Osram? Well, it's a really good one, so I wanted to say, right. So this week, it's the TMF8806. This is a time of flight sensor from AMS Osram. And um, I really like some stuff caught my eye with this. Um, so, you know, time of flight sensor is for distance sensing. Um, there's been a lot of TM, uh, a lot of time of flight sensors on the market. This one has up to five meters distance. It's fairly low cost. It's like, I don't know, like $2, $2.25. Um, it's got I squared C. It's a very tiny, easy to pick and place package. Um, and like other time of flight sensors, the way it works is it has this laser and it beeps out little laser packets of light, bounces off of the target and measures the signal coming back. And then the amount of time it takes, that time of flight is, um, lets you know the distance. Now you might be saying like, well, you know, like light goes really, really fast. It goes at the speed of light. So that's pretty impressive that you can have a microcontroller that can test um, and verify the, the time it takes it's like you know picoseconds and the answer is like yes that's very very challenging um in fact um you know the the biggest technological complexity of these sensors is how to get that seven picosecond resolution or whatever to 10 picosecond revolu resolution in order to uh, predictably measure distance um up to five meters and as little as i think uh, 20 millimeters um and one of the challenging things is that, you know, there's this, th that diagram is like, oh, all you do is bounce some light off and you measure the ba it, it coming back. But the thing is, is that the lens and the laser and the object aren't like perfectly flat reflective devices. Like there is um, this, this, you know, 10 degree illumination field and you can tell it's like, it's not perfectly flat. Like there is some variation um, from the corners and, you know, the light might move out a little bit there might be some diffraction in the um, humidity in the air um the device might be rough the, so the object might be rough it might be shiny it might be smooth it might be black it might be white gray and so when you get the data back from the sensors um from the the spad um the avalanche diode you don't get like a single magical blip you get like this kind of histogram of data and um that histogram has to be then analyzed and filtered to know like to remove any double balances to remove outliers and to get like to correlate that to the actual distance of the object being me measured so and that's like you know not that these uh, time of flight sensors are simple but there's a lot of vendors that sell time of flight sensors but the real complexity is how do you filter and manage um this histogram and also keep the cost of the packaging low and have it work in all sorts of environmental uh, conditions so you look at the uh, block diagram of like the tmf8806 you see that on the right there's the optics and the you know the laser and the filter and the reflect, you know, the whatever reflective surface and the stuff bouncing back and there's like ambient light. Um, and then there's the driver for this and um, the, the time manager. But the really, um, the computationally intense stuff is happening on a Cortex M0. And this is really common. Um, in fact, you know, pretty much every uh, time of flight sensor that we've stopped historically the ST series, but there's tons of other TMF sensors, all of them have a Cortex M0 inside. But the thing that's frustrating to me when I'm dealing with a lot of these time flight sensors is that there's this firmware that you oftentimes have to load yourself. And so like, you know, for this um, time of flight sensor, when you want to compile it, there's this 22,000 line, you know, firmware hex that you have to compile into your host microcontroller and then when you um, 
connect over I2C, you have to like download the firmware. And like, you know, I've seen this in sensors like cameras and like Wi-Fi chips, Bluetooth, but it's like, I'm starting to see this more and more in sensors because of the complexity of that filtering work that the Cortex M0 does and how you might want to like update that code and use like the latest version. Okay, the problem is though, it makes it really hard to port the code um, and it makes it hard to use it on like if you have a lot of sensors and a small microcontroller, you run out of space. So there's a lot of time of flight sensors that I say like you can't run this in like CircuitPython necessarily and get all the capabilities or you can't run it in um, like an Arduino Uno 8-bit microcontroller. Um, but what I like about the TMF8806 is one of the specific things that they did is the firmware comes pre-programmed and you can load new firmware if you'd like but the default is ready to go and so when you start it up um you can basically start doing measurements within five milliseconds because the um micro firmware doesn't have to be loaded over as export c which is like slow even at one megahertz you can start the wrong application instantly and you know within according to this scale about you know 2.4 plus 1.1 plus 0.7 um you know, less than five milliseconds, you're booted up from deep sleep or reset and you can take measurements. And of course, it's also like really easy to code. So, you know, if you're using the built-in firmware, um, these are the I2C commands. And, you know, compared to most time of flight sensors, this is quite simple. You actually could port this to like your favorite microcontroller, your favorite programming language. You want this in Rust. Um, you want this in Lua. You want this in MicroPython. You could actually do it. Um, it's that simple. And um, the hardware is also very easy to use. The pinout is, you know, pretty straightforward. You run it off of 3.3 volts. You can also run it off of 1.8 volts if you like. Give it power. I squared C. There's a reset pin. There's, you know, an interrupt output. And then there's a couple IO. But pretty much it's like, you know, your standard, uh, you know, a lot of these um, sensors come like an OF PGA, I think is what it's called. It's like a little plastic um, piece with the pads at the bottom, but very easy to pick in place and re very easy to reflow. Couple things to note though, um, so I do like the simplicity uh, and low cost and ease of use. I will say that the five meter, you know, when you look into it, it's like the five meter range, you kind of get it only with very specific um, situations. It doesn't look like you're going to get a full five meter range with your kind of st you know, wide range of environmental situations with light and reflectivity. Looks like, you know, 2.5 to three to four meters is, is much more reasonable, but that's true of every time a flight sensor. It's like once you're bouncing little laser packets off something five meters away, it gets tough to be um, accurate, uh, precise. Um, also, just check the accuracy to make sure that it's within reason. Yes, you know, it can, it has precision of, you know, maybe a millimeter, but that doesn't mean it's accurate to one millimeter because, like I said, environmental conditions, the type of object, the angle, you know, humidity, whatever, you're going to get basically plus or minus 3%. And if you do want to do five meters, you might have to calibrate the data. There's calibration examples on the libraries, which I'll show next, um, for how to calibrate it based on your lensing and situation. Of the three modes that you can boot it up into default, it looks like the 2.5 meter mode is kind of the most like plug and play, to be honest. Um, and then what I also like is they published libraries. So there's a ready to go Arduino Uno driver. Like I said, if it fits on Arduino Uno, it's gonna fit on any microcontroller you could possibly want to throw this at. And then um, there's also a pure Python driver. There's also a Linux kernel driver if you want um, something with like a device tree overlay or kernel support for like your Android embedded product device. And then uh, there's a shield. The shield comes with a microcontroller built in, so you don't actually need to use a separate Arduino if you don't want, although you can break apart the microcontroller uh, for the valve board if you do. And we have a video. And we have a great video from AMS Osram. All right, we're going to play the video, and then we'll see you on the other side for new products. And don't forget, all this is available on DigiKey. There are lots of ways to measure distance when sensing the world. However, one stands out in accuracy and speed. The measurement of light. Meet the new portfolio of precise, direct time-of-flight sensors by AMS Osram. 
From millimeters to meters, direct time of flight sensors are a key enabler for smart robots, human presence detection, and intelligent automation systems, making them smarter and safer. This is how it works. Light pulses are sent to a target, and the time is measured until they return. Time multiplied by speed of light divided by two equals distance. Easy. This function enables devices such as robots to detect objects and gain a better understanding of their surroundings. Defining focus points is a matter of fractions of a second. Direct time of flight sensors house our world-class Vixel technology for the light pulse generation and the highly sensitive AMS Osram SPAD receiver. They run at extremely low power consumption. They're easy to implement, configure, and use. And they are ultra small. Direct time of flight sensors fit into the small bezels of today's screens, where they enable automatic activation of user recognition. Even curious onlookers can be detected. This feature offers enhanced security and is provided by the multi-zone detection capability of certain products in our portfolio. With multi-zone direct time of flight, human-machine interfaces become touchless. Gesture recognition offers a new way to interact, offering endless possibilities for exciting applications. In summary, direct time of flight sensors give devices the ability to measure distance to objects in light speed, enabling applications like autonomous navigation, presence detection, trigger sensing, or gesture recognition. With its outstanding features, the AMS Osram portfolio enables customers to release their ideas. Choose the world's smallest direct time of flight sensors. Choose AMS Osram. Okay, and if you want to see right now, there is 497 inches. Uh, Can't you? I bought three. You just got started. Yeah, it I was 500. Three. You could tell where you could tell where Lady Ada was today. Yeah, the number of parts that. Are no, longer no I'm gonna make a breakout board for this. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. So that is this week's I on NPI. I on NPI.